Sometimes in a person's life, every little thing seems to go wrong. And each time it happens, a little more confidence is lost until it looks like nothing will ever go right again. But if one can find support in others, a renewed belief in oneself is sure to follow. And that's what our story's about on this episode of Still a Beaver. Uh, Marcus, your word is special. Special. Let me see. Um, S P E. Then it's either S or C. Marcus, we're waiting. S P E C I A L. Excellent, Marcus. I'm very impressed. Well, got through the whole class today without missing a single word. You forgot me. Oh, I'm sorry, Oliver. That's my mistake. Okay, well, your word is weird. Couldn't you tell me a little more about the word? Just spell the word, Oliver. Weird. Weird. I before E, except after C. W-I-E-R-D. <laughs> no, Oliver, it's W-E-I-R-D. But what about the rule? There are some exceptions. But I studied my words so hard. Couldn't you just give me another word? Uh, I'm sorry, Oliver. You know what the rules are. about what we do at school. <laughs> That's exactly why I need to go. Dad, you're not going to go talk with Miss Canfield, are you? Oh, I thought 
thought I'd sneak out to the playground and see if I can still make it to the top of the jungle gym. <laughs> oh, honey, of course we're going to talk to your teacher, but you don't have anything to worry about. Do you? No, just as long as you don't go snooping around in my desk. Uh, where's Oliver? He's upstairs moping again. No, he's not still upset about falling off the riser during the class picture, is he? Heck, Dad, I don't know. But I'll look after him for you. Thanks. Now, you know where to reach us if you have any problems. Kip, I'll be visiting your class. Anything you want me to ask your teacher? Yeah. I would appreciate if you could find out if they're going to be out two singles on tomorrow's quiz. <laughs> See if I can work that casually into the conversation. I think we ought to go. Yes. Oh, yeah, we don't want to be late. We have to stay after school. Bye, honey. I hope Miss Canfield doesn't mention that I use Melissa Henson's retainer for my collage. I don't have anything to worry about. Freddie Haskell in your class. Everybody else looks good in comparison. <laughs> Let's go upstairs and give Oliver a pink belly. Hey, Marcia, how you been? Remember me, Eddie Haskell? <laughs> good memory. <laughs> Eddie, people tend to remember when you don't drive them home from the prom. Isn't this the greatest? All the guys together again at school. Maybe so, Rich. But I still get nervous every time I walk in here. Eddie, you're suffering from what we psychologists call academic shell shock. Hey, is that a real disease? Or is it just something you made up to peddle your book on television? No, <laughs> no, oh, this is real. Some guys who've had it tough in school go through life always afraid that someone's going to yell at them. I've been treating Lumpy for it for years. So much for the privacy of the doctor-patient relationship. Hey, guys, I got it. We'll sneak into the science lab and we'll get us some tadpoles and we'll dump them in the punch bowl. <laughs> hey, Mr. Bloomgarden. Why, what a finely tailored suit you're wearing. It's nice to see a teacher who still believes in setting standards for our youth. Why, thank you, Eddie. It's too bad you didn't come into contact with more of us when you were growing up. <laughs> Remind me to find out where that guy parks his car. <laughs> yeah, isn't that Joe Bartlett? Oh, this place brings back memories. Sure does. I brought cakes on your birthday, I brought costumes on Halloween, and I brought your father when you were in trouble. <laughs> the only thing I remember is the eighth grade, when I met Mary Ellen. Oh, well, I think I'm going to go and find myself a good seat while you two relive your courtship. <sighs> it's mm. funny how things change, isn't it? Mm. You know, we were in the same science class for a whole semester, but I never paid attention to you. We even dissected a crayfish together. <laughs> yeah, I never really noticed you until you came back from that spring vacation in Fort Lauderdale. Mm. You're all tan, wearing that little white dress with a little heel on your shoulder. <laughs> well, he didn't have any moisturizer then. I remember. I saw you standing here right next to your locker. You were opening it, and I just stared, stared. I remember thinking, that is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, yeah. You know, I bet I even remember the combination of your locker. <laughs> you really yeah. Well, there some things a man never forgets. Well, I guess once in love, always in love. Is there ever any doubt? You just opened Julie Foster's old locker. <laughs> you have been to Florida, haven't you? There's Courtney's self-portrait, babe. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, my little girl is so expressive. There's Oliver's. Cute, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very nice. It's, uh, it's, it's different. Wait a minute, Richard. You see something, don't you? No, there's not much there to see. I mean, it's very nice. It's really. Richard, we've been friends for a long time. And if there's something I should know, you really ought to tell me. Well, I don't want to make any snap judgments, but 
The way kids draw things can usually tell you a lot about them. Well-adjusted kids add a lot more detail. Like a nose. Yeah. I mean, look how clear and focused Courtney's is. And, you know, I could be wrong, but Oliver might be having some problems with his self-image, Pete. Well, of course Oliver has a couple problems. What kid doesn't? Mine. Uh, but there's reasons for that. <laughs> look, Pete, Ollie's a great kid, and I don't mean to alarm you, but uh, if you decide there is a problem, let me know. So long, guy. Hello, Richard. Hi. Well, hello, Mr. Bloomgarden. Theodore, nice to see you again. Have you finished your term paper yet? Well, I've been busy. Since 1958. <laughs> um, are you uh, still conducting the Glee Club? Oh, yes, except this year we didn't have enough sopranos to do uh, Handel's Messiah, so instead we decided to do a Snoopy Christmas. Oh, well, you know, they're both very inspirational. Uh, interesting picture, isn't it? In all honesty, it's not quite what I'd hoped for. You see, I don't think Oliver's got a lot of confidence in himself right now. Well, anybody can draw a bad picture. Even Picasso had a few clinkers, right? <laughs> well, look, quite honestly, I, I don't see Oliver applying himself lately uh, in the way in which he's capable. I'm concerned that he's going to fall behind the other kids and begin to see himself as a loser. Oh, I sure wouldn't want that to happen. Neither would I. Uh, he's such a good boy. So, I think if you'll just give him uh, some small, realistic goals, he'll accomplish them and feel better about himself. Thanks, Mr. Bloomgarden. That's good advice as usual. Uh, one other thing. I was just curious. Uh, Courtney Rickover, is, uh, is she pretty well adjusted? Yeah. <laughs> Oliver, I'd like to talk to you about parent-teacher night. Okay. Well, there were parents there, and uh, there were teachers there, too. That's probably why they call it parent-teacher night. <laughs> really short. Now, uh... Don't you want to know what Mr. Bloomgarden had to say? Probably not. But I got a feeling you're going to tell me anyway. Very, very sharp. Mr. Bloomgarden thinks you're a great kid. Dad, after you lugged all the way down there, he's not going to tell you what a nerd I am. Now, don't say that. Well, you've got a lot going for you. And I think it's about time that you realized it. Okay. Good night, Dad. Oliver, wait a minute. Now, I know that guys your age, well, they don't really like to tell what's going on inside of them. But are you holding something back from me? Uh-huh. Are we done now? No. Oliver, I'm your father. I want to help you. Thanks, but there's not much you can do about me being picked last for teams. Well, sure I can. This weekend, we'll throw the ball around. It's not just that. I can't do nothing right. When it was my turn to take care of the class goldfish, he drowned. <laughs> Oliver, I think you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You may find this hard to believe, but when I was your age, I felt the same way you do. Well, well why don't you tell me what you did? Then I can do it. Well, I guess I kind of outgrew it. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay, Grandma. We're just sitting around waiting for me to outgrow my problems. That's nice. But don't forget to set your alarm early so you'll have plenty of time to bind up those newspapers in the garage. What for? What don't you remember? Just go paper drive starts tomorrow. Can't we just save them in case you buy a bird? All of our paper drives are important. Recycling saves trees. It's good for the ecology. And they announced at school tonight that the class that brings in the most papers gets her own computer. What's the point? We're not going to win anyway. Well, not with that attitude, you're not. Oliver, don't give up before you even try. Is this the kind of computer you can play games on without sticking quarters in? It sure is. I guess it 
it wouldn't hurt to bring the papers in. Tomorrow, anyway. That's my boy. Hot chocolate, anyone? With marshmallows? Of course, Peter. <laughs> enjoying a new computer soon. It seems that our class is now in first place in the paper drive, and the student who's brought in the most papers is Oliver Cleaver. This Oliver Cleaver? <laughs> you bet. This is nothing. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring in so many papers to the school, there won't be enough room for students. <laughs> Very much for the information, Mrs. Phillips. I'm very sorry that Oliver woke you up this morning. You know what? If he comes back for your evening paper, uh, tell him to come home. We miss him. <laughs> Not me. Oh, I'm sorry. There's somebody at the door. I gotta go now. Oh, hi, Wally. Why don't you climb in for a cup of coffee? Uh, don't try and bribe me. I just want my newspaper. Oh. Help yourself. Beaver, I pay for home delivery to my house, not to yours. What do I have to do? Set a trap for the kid? Oh, uh, now calm down, Wally. I can't calm down. Look, at I have a routine. I get up in the morning, I jog, I come home, I take my shower, I get dressed, and I read my newspaper. <laughs> the last four mornings, I haven't been able to read anything but the back of a cereal box. I had to fight Kelly for that. I realize that uh, well, Oliver may have gone just a little bit overboard on this paper drive, but isn't it nice that he's finally throwing himself into something for a change? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, look, look, I don't mind that he takes my newspaper, but couldn't he at least tear out Dick Tracy and slip it under the door? Anyway, I'm going to put in a good word for you. You know, in the meantime, thanks for being such an understanding uncle. How about that cup of coffee? Beaver, I never have my coffee until I read my newspaper. <laughs> Boy, I'm really in a rut, aren't I? Yeah. Okay, I will have that cup of coffee. And what the heck? Put some cream in. Coming right up. <laughs> I don't regret this. <laughs> of a real juicy Dear Abby. <laughs> Boy, I'm sure glad she's not my mom. Now, what can I do you for? Oh, nothing. I'm just coming by to collect the papers you promised me. Gee, Spud, I wish I could help you out, but I re-promised them to Melissa Hensler. But you gave me your word. Mm, my word's only as good as the paper it's printed on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help Melissa. Her class is the only one that can catch us for the prize. You might as well sell your wagons for scrap, because she's giving away free passes to her old man's movie theater for every bunch of papers you give her. Now what am I going to do? Give passes to see my dad's office? Hey, don't look at me like that. This whole thing's your fault. What did I do? You trusted me. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did. I'll never win now. Now I feel bad. It'll pass. <laughs> Oliver, you can't quit the paper drive now. You are only hope of winning that computer. Forget it. The only way we're going to win is if Melissa transfers into our class. But then that wouldn't be worth it, because we're all your kids. <laughs> that Melissa has no shape. She's standing in front of the school training movie tickets for kids' newspapers. Ollie, I hope you crunch her. Don't get your hopes up. Oliver's backing out. He's going belly up. Just like our class of goldfish. That's <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, Kelly. I probably wouldn't have won anyways. Oh, 
Dolly, you can't back out. Your dreams are not a quitter. You can do it, Dolly. Anybody who can eat a whole lunch in three minutes can do anything. So what's it gonna be, Ollie? Say, Ollie, since you can't possibly win by tomorrow's deadline, you might as well trade me your papers for a pass to the movies. You better keep those tickets for yourself, Melissa. Because when my class wins tomorrow, you're going to need a dark place to hide. You don't scare me, Carrot Head. You never have enough paper to defeat me by tomorrow morning. Even if you stayed up all night. I'll bring in more papers than you. Even if I have to stay up two nights. Yeah. As we're running short of time, I, uh, I want you room captains to thank everybody for doing such a wonderful job in making our uh, paper drive such a huge success. Uh, from the looks of it, I'd say we, we have a clear winner. Thank you, Mr. Boomgarden. Here, take your wife to movie to celebrate my victory. <laughs> but it's not 8 o'clock yet, and Oliver's coming with more papers. Kip. Oliver did a fine job, but every contest has to have a deadline, and uh, I'm afraid we only have a minute left. But you can do a lot in a minute. My mother can make a whole bowl of rice in that time. <laughs> you should be happy, Kelly. I wouldn't be here for our class. I wouldn't care if you won our class a trip to the state capitol, because you cheated. You cleavers are all bad losers. Oh, yeah, there are no losers in our family. Papers. But the paper drive's over. I know, but I'm going to get a head start for next year so no one will catch me. Especially that lizard, Melissa. Oliver, you know there are other challenges in life besides the paper drive. Like what? Well, like school and sports, scouting. Yeah, but there's none that I'm going to be as good at. But if you put even half the effort you put toward that paper drive into anything else, I know you'd do very well. You really think so? Well, you never know unless you try. Mmm, Grandma, those cookies sure smell good. Well, that's what I just said. You'll never know unless you try. <laughs> boys cared about were good looks and fast cars. And unfortunately, that pea brain had both. Hey, wait. 
but she might need Dad's yearbook. Let's see if we can pick Dad up from the swim team picture. What are you up to? I'm trying to see what Julie Foster wrote in your yearbook, but Mom's trying to stop me. Oh, you don't have to look that up. I memorized it. You memorized it? Well, sure. How could I forget it? Dearest Wally, it's never been a secret how much I care for you. I flunked English this year just because you sat next to me. She never was too bright. I know that I've made a fool of myself, but the one thing I've learned is that I will never be able to compete with the way you feel about Mary Ellen Rogers. Always Julie. Oh. You see, Mom, you had nothing to worry about. Oh. I never gave her enough credit. That must have been really hard for her to say. I'd like to read that again. Yeah, now, wait a minute. I think it means that something needs to get written down. You made the whole thing up, didn't you? You'll, you'll never know. Maybe I could just take one tiny little <laughs> search for a stolen thoroughbred on the next Edison Twins at a special time, 2.45 p.m. today, following Jiminy Cricket Theater.